Hey everyone, welcome back to STEMAGIR. You don't want to miss today's video. You're in for a real treat. Many of us have heard of pharmacists, and we know them because they help us fill medicine that doctors prescribe to us. But there's so much more that pharmacists do. In this two-part series, you will learn about pharmacists and a lot of the cool things that you never knew about the field of pharmacy, so stay tuned. Before we get started, be sure to click the like button and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Also, be sure to share this video with your friends and all of your family. And now, let's explore the field of pharmacy with our special guest, Dr. Melissa Brent. Dr. Melissa Brent is a licensed pharmacist with a background in specialty pharmacy, medication therapy management, chronic disease management, and project management. She completed her undergraduate degree at Virginia Tech in Biology. She also completed her Doctor of Pharmacy, or PharmD, program at the Medical College of Virginia, or Virginia Commonwealth University, or VCU. She has so much information to share with us, so let's get started. Hello, Ms. Brandt, and welcome to STEMAGIR. Thank you for being here and taking the time to talk a little bit about your career. I really appreciate it. To kick things off, I want to start our interview today with a general question. I understand that you're a pharmacist. Can you explain what a pharmacist is and why they are an important part of our healthcare system? Absolutely, I think that's a, that's a great question to start off with. So really, when you think of a pharmacist, it's actually, it's very simple. It's a medication expert. So your pharmacists are the ones that tell you how to properly use your medication. Does it go in your mouth? Does it go in your ear? How often do you take it? Um, some medications are actually better to be taken in the morning. Some are better to be taken in the evening. Where do we store our medication? Does it have to be in the refrigerator? And uh, this may shock you, but even in the refrigerator, there are places we want your medication. We don't want it too far back. If it's too far back, it can freeze the medication and render it ineffective. Sometimes most people will put medications in the bathroom, right? Because that's where the medicine cabinet is. But we actually don't want them to put it there. Part of that reason is it has, when you take hot showers, it gets very humid in there. It can actually mess up the integrity of your medication. Your, your pharmacist may tell you there are certain foods you can't take. There's actually a cholesterol medication out there that... You can't take it with grapefruit juice. If you drink grapefruit juice and you take this medication, it can actually cause problems in your muscle tissue and, and break down your muscle tissue as well. Uh, essentially, your medication, or excuse me, your pharmacist is really that person to give that information to you. Um, and really, most importantly, it's to review that prescription. So that piece of paper, that document that that doctor gives you when you leave the doctor's office, mm -hmm. And you may see it, it probably has funny writing on it, has different, you know, most people can't read them because they're using special codes that we've learned in school to read. We really want to review that prescription and we want to make sure that it's the right drug for you. Does it make sense? Is the, the dose correct uh, for your weight? Is, the, is it the right drug for your disease or your condition? Maybe they wrote for the wrong drug. You would be surprised. Some physicians have actually wrote prescriptions that are just wrong and we've had to intervene and we've had to check it and ensure that it's safe for our patient. Um, we'll even look at patients kidney function, you know, because medications get actually, they, when they go through the body, they get wasted out through your kidneys. So if you have really bad kidneys, maybe it's not a good drug for you. If your liver is bad, and that's a place where medications get broken down too maybe the drug isn't good for you. So all those different things is what your pharmacist does to get that order to you, which is why it can take a little bit of time, right? I know a lot of people, they go to the pharmacy and they're like, just put it in a bottle. Um, but there's a lot of different things going on behind the scenes there that are just ensuring that medication is safe. Again, they're, they're important to our healthcare system because our physicians are really diagnosing and then we are really making sure that drug makes sense and it's, it's really going to be appropriate and safe and not harm you. Okay. Can you talk more about where pharmacists work? 
I've seen pharmacists work at local pharmacies, but are there other places where pharmacists work that we maybe don't think about? Absolutely. That's, I love that question. Um, Cause even I, as a pharmacist, when I was in school, I didn't even recognize there are so many places that pharmacists are working. Uh, the most common is what you, you kind of talked about. So it's what we call that retail pharmacist. They're the ones that are in CVS or Target or Walgreens that front line availability of a healthcare worker. Uh, usually if you're getting a paper prescription from a doctor, you're usually going to your retail pharmacist to get that filled. There are also pharmacists that teach in colleges. So they not only will teach pharmacy students, but they'll teach medical students, they'll teach nursing students. Some of these students also need to know about medications, right? Because your, your doctor is writing that prescription. So we want them to know what they're writing. Um, there are pharmacists in sales. They actually work for big manufacturing companies and they go out and they sell that medication or they educate the doctors about it, maybe a medication that they're writing for. Research and development, you'll see pharmacists there. Hospitals, and the hospitals are hidden. We kind of we kind of have a little joke because we're in that basement. You know, when you go to a hospital, you don't really see the pharmacists. We're kind of in a way, but those drugs that make it up to that patient where that bag is hanging, those are made by pharmacists. So they're down there doing that. Some pharmacists are in doctor's offices as well. You will find them actually working for insurance companies, which is a, a interesting thing. So if you have a medication that's very, very expensive, when you send that order to your insurance company, they're actually your pharmacists and other healthcare provider or people working there. And they're making sure that that makes sense. And, and why do you have to be on this high dollar drug? You know, do you have the right labs? Let's review that. Um, now, for me personally, I work as a home infusion pharmacist. I'm going to get into that one a little bit because I do want to go over two other ones. There's actually a nuclear pharmacist. Wow. That's pretty cool. You know, and the nuclear pharmacist does require extra special training. So after you've gone through pharmacy school, they do more training after that. And they make these like radioactive materials and they're the medicines that trace in the body and they light up a part of your body. Mm. So say a doctor wants to diagnose there's something going on in your organs and they can't see it. And pharmacists will go super early in the morning. They usually work at like 2 a.m. And they'll make this very unstable drug in a very, you know, uh, secure place. And then it only has usually a few hours, if anything, that it's good for. And they'll give that to the doctor to give to the patient. And they'll actually take that either by mouth or in the, you know, in the IV. And it'll kind of show where things are happening. So they may have you swallow something and then it kind of shows and lights up the body on the screen. Um, and there's long-term care pharmacists. So these are the pharmacists that are working in like long-term or senior citizen kind of living facilities and they go through and they will look to see if there's medication duplication. So there's these funny things that happen in pharmacy. People, and this will happen, will go to different doctors. And not only those doctors don't talk and they may go to one doctor and get blood pressure medication. Then they may go to another doctor and also get blood pressure medication, but a different medication name not realizing that they're actually taking two drugs that do the same thing. Oh, so wow. these pharmacists will go in and make sure there's no duplication. Um, does it make sense? And there's another, another thing I was talking about where you'll get a drug and then you get a side effect, right? And so what happens is they write you for another drug and then you get another side effect and another drug mm. and another side effect. And next thing you know it, you had one condition, but you're on 15 drugs because of all these side effects. So those pharmacists may go in there and say, hey, I don't think the patient needs to be on all of these things. These are side effects. You know, why is that happening? Perhaps we just change drug number one and we can take out these 15 drugs and the patient only has to be on a couple. Um, for home infusion pharmacy, which is what I do, our specialty is we actually make those medication bags. So when you're going to the hospital, like I said, and there's a pole and there's a bag hanging there, there's stuff in that bag that we actually go in and we make all those different things and work with the doctor to figure out what they want the patient to, to get. And we specialize in how do we get this powder to turn into a liquid and get this into a patient's veins. 
So what I do is the medication that's not taken by mouth, but actually it's stuck in your veins. So intra intravenous, we call it. And it infuses over a certain time period. Um, it infuses at a certain rate. And there's all these stability things we have to calculate out to make sure that it's safe for you and that you're getting what you need and that we are following the doctor's orders. So as you can see, there's just, there's so many, so many things. It's not just your typical, you know, CVS pharmacist, but a lot of different uh, things that pharmacists do that I don't even know that people know that they're pharmacists. Yeah, there's a lot of locations I've just yeah, learned right now that they work at. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. And like I said, you know, I really didn't notice that until I'd gone to pharmacy school. I always thought pharmacists were only at, Walgreens, Target, yeah. I didn't realize they were in other places. So there's so many opportunities for pharmacists. Yeah. It's really a, a, a bigger uh, job than I think people realize. Yeah. How do you make sure that each specific patient gets the right medicine and the right amount of that medicine? That's another great question. So. We basically have a thing that we go by called right drug, right patient, right dose. And every different environment, whether it's a retail setting or a hospital, have these different checkpoints along the way. From the time that a prescription is received to us, from the time that it makes it to the patient. And we work closely with what we have our pharmacy technicians. So our pharmacy technicians usually kind of we interpret it, read again. We will sign off on it. We'll question it if we don't think it's right or something doesn't make sense. We'll call back the doctor and say, hey, this we can't read this or this doesn't sound like it's probably right. Or we talk to the patient and they don't think they're supposed to be on something that treats this disease. But really it's that checkpoint system. I think for me personally, I love the, the more eyes on a prescription, the better. Because like, I don't know if you've ever written a story and you've wrote the word the twice or you've written something and your brain doesn't see it, right? Your brain is only going to see what you think is being said there. So you're like, you just keep reading it. You don't see the word the twice. But if somebody else comes and edits that for you and looks at it, they're like, wait a minute, you put that in there. So I love the more eyes on a prescription, the better. They may see something that we don't see it kind of helps if somebody's tired, having not a good day. They're not just, they're just not paying attention. So that's really part of it. And there's little places that we have to sign off on it saying, I verified it. This other pharmacist has verified it. We all think it looks good and correct. It makes sense. Let's get it right to the patient. So that's really is having those extra uh, checkpoints along the way to make sure that the patient's gonna get the right drug, right dose, and of course, right patient. Thanks for watching part one of the two-part series on pharmacists. If you want to learn even more about pharmacy and some really cool facts, click the link for the second part of the series in the playlist. Please remember to subscribe and like the video, and I'll see you in part two.